Hi, in this video I'll show you how to use a bubble chart to compare one large value to many small values. In this scenario I have a case where I have a few items and their quantities kind of differ by one item. One item shows the largest and we have other items that are a little bit smaller. Unfortunately in this particular chart, the bar chart, we have the small item, item 5, which really doesn't show up that much. Now what we can do in this case is use a logarithmic scale and that can kind of solve it or we can use a bubble chart to kind of show the area like this. So we can use a bubble chart to show the area where we have the large item and then contrast that with the smaller items and you can see it still shows up a little bit. Item 5 which is the smallest one still shows up. So this is another option in data visualization just to make your chart uh, make a point. So you can either use the bar chart I showed earlier or you can use a bubble chart to express the comparison of a very large number uh, versus a very small number. So this kind of shows the comparison in a different way. So let me show you how you can create this bubble chart. So let me go ahead and take the values from the chart. Let me go ahead and just take this. This is not a colored here. Control C to copy. Do a new sheet here. Control V to paste. Now I have my values here. And what I need to do is I need to create a, the x, y coordinates. So in a bubble chart we have our we have our x coordinates, we have our y coordinates, and the quantity is the size of the bubble. So I'm going to have to insert some columns here. I'm going to go ahead and right click, go to insert, and just do it again. Right click, uh, insert. And I'm just going to call this x and y. x and y. Now the bubble chart what's going to happen is I'm going to have all the bubbles line up in one line and that's going to be on the y-axis. So the y-axis, all I need to do is just make sure they're all the same. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and just type the number one, control enter, it fills in everything. And for the x-axis, I'm going to have it step through about um, probably 0.5 each. My x-axis only needs to go from one to two or one to three. So I'm going to keep it simple and maybe I'm going to start at 0.5 and then the next one is going to be at 0.75 and this will be 1, this will be 1.25 and this will be 1.5. So these are just kind of preliminary figures. I'm going to put them in there and then if the bubbles are too tight or too loose I'm going to change them. So all I need to do is select my range of data. I don't need to select the headings. I can add that in later on. I can select the description and add that in later on. But just select the data itself and go under insert, go under the charts and click on the bubble. So now you see my bubble is a little bit high here. And what I need to do is I just need to kind of change the max minimum and maximums for these axes. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my vertical axis here, right click, go to format chart area and for the, oops, let me go ahead and it gave my chart area panel this navigation panel so I can go ahead and just click on the axis again. You can see it changed here so you know you notice with uh, Excel 2013 when you click on when you have your panel here you can click on anything else uh, in your chart and it will change the particular option you wanted to change so let me go ahead and click back on the vertical axis here and uh, what I want to do is I want to change the size and proportions. Oh, not the size and proportions. I wanted to change the axis options. So going into the axis options, click there. So I'm gonna change the maximum to two. Now the major units may it may not matter in this case. I can just, because I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, delete this axis. That might not matter for now, so that's okay. Um, for the axis units down here, uh, I want to have it set also to the maximum of two here. So it kind of shows up in the middle. So I can play with this later on, but this looks good so far. What I'm going to do now is let me go ahead and close this. And let me go ahead and just remove that and remove, click on the axis and just press delete. So that removes that. Let me go ahead and click. I don't want the grid line, so I'm going to click on that, press delete, and press this grid line. Click on that grid line, press delete. And now I have pretty much my, um, my chart here to do the comparison. Now, they all look the same color. If I like to keep the same color, I would have, but if I don't, I can actually go ahead and change the color and have it um, do it automatically. So, so I select that and I right click, go under Format Data Series. I can just change the color, uh, go under the 
fill and line, go under fill, and click on very core vary colors by point. So they all kind of change uh, based on the default settings. Uh, I can ch change the colors here, do this type of option there, or after I set that I can do this one. But uh, let's go ahead and just stay with the colorful there. So now I got the colors there. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, click outside and see what it shows up here. So now I want to have the labels there. So if I want to put the labels there, I can go ahead and right click and add data labels. So I can add the data labels. You'll notice that it added the data labels of one, which is our or why. Uh, I want to add the data labels for the description here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the data label here. So let me go ahead and find my uh, data label options. Here we go. And what I want to do is I want to have the label from the value from the cells. So I'm going to select some value from the cells. I'm going to click on that. It's going to give me a box where my data label range is. I'm going to go ahead and select this range here. Press OK and I've got my range here and I'm gonna get rid of that one so I'm gonna uncheck the Y value and maybe I don't need the leader line so what a leader line does is if you move your label a bit farther it's gonna show a line that kinda of connects your label to the object but I'm not, I don't want that there because it's gonna kinda of mess up mess it up and make it look a little bit more messy so I'm gonna go ahead and click uncheck that click close and I'm gonna manually move these around. Actually, I, I probably want these labels to be on top instead of on the side. So I'm gonna right click and go under Format Data Labels and we're gonna have the label position uh, above. So I don't have to move it around too much. Cl click Close there and now I have my data labels here. So I have my item one, two, three, four, five. Number one is the biggest here. You notice that also I sorted these based off of an ascending uh, sort. And that's kind of what gave it uh, that option to go from least to greatest here. Um, if I did the descending sort, you'd have a different view. So uh, I usually just kind of do ascending sort for this particular type of uh, chart. So now I've got my chart. Uh, if I wanted to kind of show this chart, uh, this particular tab, and I didn't want to show my X and Y, I can just go ahead and select uh, those two columns, uh, right click and select hide. But you'll notice once I do that, the chart looks like it disappeared. And the reason why is by default, once you hide your data, it also gets hidden from the chart if you do a hide on the table. But let me go ahead and turn that off. I can select my chart, uh, go under Design, go under Select Data, and where it has hidden empty cells, select, on, select that. So I just want to check off this box, which has Show Data in Hidden Rows and Columns. So if I click that, click OK, the data comes right back. Let me go ahead and close this, click OK. And now the data is there, even though I hid the columns here. So the data is right here for me to show. And this is kind of a good example of uh, a very minimal chart where you can uh, take this data and just kind of go ahead and put it onto a PowerPoint. And you can you can do this in PowerPoint or, or in Excel where you draw the circles. But in this way, this probably gives you a more exact circle when you really think about it because Excel is actually drawing it out for you uh, based on the values that you gave it instead of you drawing it out and trying to guess the proportions of each of the circles for comparison. So that's the way that you can make a bubble chart to compare uh, a large value with a lot of more smaller values. Just another way to visualize your data instead of using a, a bar chart or a column chart. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.